Good morning, Jackson County. Welcome to the future. This is uh, an opportunity that we've been waiting for for so many years. I have not seen this uh, video, but I, uh, I did take the opportunity to, to bring my dad's back again. And it just absolutely, uh, I was sitting beside Alicia and it just it brings tears to my heart uh, every time I think about it. That this property that we're breaking ground on today, the most advanced titanium manufacturing plant in the world, at one time had over 4,000 employees uh, that carried a bag like this to go to work. And uh, the point I was trying to make is it makes a difference in people's lives. It really does. Every day that we create opportunities and jobs affects the future of our society and the future of the people and their families. And we can never lose sight of that. And I want to thank from the bottom of my heart and the Jack people of Jackson County, Berkshire Hathaway, for making this opportunity possible for our citizens, our community, and this region. Let's give them a great <laughs> This is the moment we've been waiting for for so long. Senator Manchin, you and I were at uh, the Ravenswood Gymnasium when Century and Women were closed. And we had uh, to break the news to all those people. And you were so good then as governor to, uh, uh, to help those people uh, transition. We said then there would be a brighter day. There would be a new beginning. Today is that new beginning. This is our opportunity. This is the most advanced facility in America and in the world. And we are going to make it shine, the people of Jackson County. And so uh, let's just never lose sight of all that uh, our past has brought forth. We, have, we honor that. Constellium is a great employer. They've carried on their traditions. But this is a moment that we need to celebrate and recognize as uh, an opportunity of unfathomable um, you know, and, and opportunity that will really gratify the people of our state and the region. So uh, with that, I would like to uh, welcome to the podium our new best friend in Jackson County, <laughs> Alicia Knapp, the president of Berkshire Hathaway Energy Renewables who made this uh, transaction possible. Let's give her a great <laughs> absolute joy working with you on this project. And Senator Jeffries, thank you for bringing us to West Virginia in the first place and for all the rides and the ideas and the coffees and the meetings <laughs> along the way. Your commitment to the state and economic development in particular is admirable and I would say based on today's events it's also very effective. So we have a lot to pack into this groundbreaking ceremony, including a special announcement from Muji by Jazz and our next energy. So thank you to everybody on this stage and in the audience for your tremendous support. You believed West Virginia could begin to chart a new course. You invited us to be a part of it. In September, we announced it, and now here we are. We're about to see a lot of work happen at this project site. I can't wait, personally, to turn some dirt here shortly. Our teams have already put in a lot of work just to get to this laughter. I know I will turn dirt. <laughs> <laughs> our teams have put in a lot of work just to get to this point, and based on everything we've experienced since our first trip to the state, what we were promised is true. West Virginia is truly a great place to do business. sustainable energy solutions, but we don't do it alone. 
In that spirit of collaboration, Berkshire Hathaway Energy CEO Bill Furman and I made dozens of visits here just to listen. We wanted to understand West Virginia's needs before we ever started recommending solutions. When this opportunity to attract new manufacturing to the state with renewable energy presented itself, we knew we had a winner. So many things are converging to make this project truly remarkable. It's about jobs. It's about growth. It's about community engagement. And at the end of the day, it's about renewable energy, a first of its kind microgrid, laying the foundation for economic development and redevelopment. West Virginia is embracing new clean energy solutions to challenges many states are facing. So right now, West Virginia is becoming the leader. And so before we get to work, I want to pause again to say thank you. Thank you to Steve for trusting BHE Renewables with PCC's energy needs. Thank you to Mujib and One for providing storage that will make this project uniquely resilient and for joining us here at Ravenswood. Governor Justice, I'm told, is on his way, and I also wanted to thank him for his support. His enthusiasm for this project, I'm sure when he gets here, will be very apparent. Um, also, Speaker Hanshaw was going to be here today, but the House is in session this morning, so he couldn't be here. I talked to him yesterday and definitely thanked him for helping us to get here as well. President Blair, also unable to be here, the, the two worked together, Speaker Hanshaw and President Blair, uh, to make this project a reality and help us get through the first hurdle, which was getting some legislation passed. And then Senator Jeffries and the remainder of the state legislature, thank you for all of your help in, in that first uh, huge task that put this project on the right, in the right direction. Senator Manchin, thank you for your support here in West Virginia and for your vision of how whole communities, whole, whole communities can participate in the energy transition. We're proud to have the opportunity to bring the benefits of the Inflation Reduction Act right back here to West Virginia. And Senator Capito, thank you for your constant support and for your leadership on the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which provides much needed support for the infrastructure required to reinvigorate communities like Jackson County. We're very excited that this project qualifies for several IIJA programs and hope we're successful in bringing these dollars back to this community. Congresswoman Miller, thank you for supporting policies such as Opportunity Zones that attract businesses like ours to the state. And last but certainly not least, thank you to Jackson County and to all our community partners for your support. I'm so happy to be here with all of you today to celebrate the new beginning for Jackson County. Thank you for being here. And now please welcome Steve Wright, President of PCC Companies, Special Metals, and Timex. Thank you, Alicia. Good morning. Uh, I'm Steve Wright, uh, President of PCC Metals. Uh, PC Metals Group is made up of our Titanium Metals Corporation, which uh, we, we call Timet, it's known as Timet in the world, and Special Metals Corporation, also a, a site located here in West Virginia, Huntington. Uh, both are part of Precision Cast Parts and provide a wide range of metal alloys for the aerospace and other sectors. I'd like to thank all of you for attending this groundbreaking event for our new Timet Melt location. New facility will be the first of its kind and will utilize 100% renewable energy microgrid that Alicia just spoke about. To my knowledge, there's no other such facility in the world. So we're very excited about our partnership with Berkshire Hathaway Energy Renewables and Hardex Energy. This project is particularly special because as the world demand for aerospace products, increases, we will have the capacity and the capability to meet our customers' needs for decades to come. 
We will be doing it using 100% renewable energy, something that no other producer can match at this point. Timac began producing titanium alloys in 1950 and has led the industry in milk and melted products ever since. We supply nearly one-fifth of the world's titanium, and we're the only supplier with production facilities in both the United States and Europe to support our multinational customer base. Research and development of our new alloys has always been a strong focus for Time Ed. Time Ed's technical laboratories are the most extensive, dedicated titanium research and development in the world. We hold many proprietary patents on our titanium alloys, and many industries rely on those products for holding up in, this demanding, in demanding applications. We like to say from aerospace to outer space, to deep sea conditions, our products are known for their quality and for their durability. Time that's worldwide network includes seven mills, with this being our eighth here in Ravenswood. And the Ravenswood plant will be the first greenfield plant built in many, many decades. I actually have a titanium shovel with me today, the groundbreaking ceremony that was used in our Toronto, Ohio facility about two hours north of here. Um, it was used in 1962 for the groundbreaking of a mill expansion, and then again in the early 80s for an expansion. So uh, a little ceremonial uh, shovel brought with me today, forged at our titanium plant there. So Time Met's uh, really excited about this. The, the time of this project could not be better. Over the past few years, uh, the aerospace industry was severely impacted by the, the global pandemic. Air travel stalled or halted in many instances in 2020, and that quickly um, reduced air travel, which slowed the production of titanium needs way down. Now we're seeing an incredible demand building as the world continues to re return to normalcy. As the increasing demand for more titanium became clear last year, particularly as the war in Ukraine constricted the supply of titanium, it became evident that capital investment would be required for us to support our customers' needs over the next decade and beyond. <clears throat> At around the same time, we, be we, we became aware of our sister company, BAT Renewables, and the Renewable Energy Microgrid Site Project. And what better way to launch our next generation melt facility than partnering with our sister company within Berkshire Hathaway? Couldn't be more pleased with the location for this site either. West Virginia is very welcoming to manufacturing. The site is also relatively close to other existing time app facilities in neighboring states. Our Toronto, Ohio facility I mentioned is about two hours north. And the team in operations there nicely complement this plant, which we're going to build here. Without a doubt, West Virginia has a rich history of partnering, partnering with industry and has an amazing base of skilled, dedicated people. And we look forward to building a great team here. As we explored the project last year, our discussion with the states, congressional and other leaders were very productive. It was very clear that we were all aligned in the benefits this site would bring to our companies and to the state and local economies. From the beginning, West Virginia's federal, state, and local delegates and officials have been very supportive of this project. And as questions arose or potential barriers developed, these leaders were quick to find solutions that were amicable to everyone. I truly appreciate the support of, and, and everything we've received thus far. We couldn't have made it to this point without all of you. So in conclusion, I just want to say we're very excited kick this construction project off today. We look forward to beginning production in late 2024 and bringing this facility fully online in early 2025 to support that global aerospace industry I mentioned. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Wajib Ajaz, founder and CEO of One. Thank you, Steve. You know, when you uh, come visit this region, you'll see a sign that welcomes you that says, historic past, bright future. I like that. Thinking about our past is important because it gives us context. If you think about the industrial revolution that we found ourselves in, at the end of the 1800s and the beginning of the 1900s, there were many projects that define our country and if we look back, we can get an example of what I believe the significance of today's event 
is paralleled. No less than the day in 1874 where we found ourselves celebrating a bridge that crossed the Mississippi River with enough strength that a railroad train could cross that bridge and explore the entire west of our country. This event today, in my mind, is just exactly like that parallel. America's always been about infrastructure. It defines why this country is greater in its strength, is that we think carefully about laying a foundation that the broader masses of our people can gain advantage of and create prosperity from. As I look at West Virginia, studying the late 1800s, it was because of West Virginia that the railroad infrastructure flourished because coal needed a transport mechanism and West Virginia laid that foundation for the American rail industry. I think that's exciting. Historic past, bright future. As we think, as we think about West Virginia's place in the country today as America's powerhouse, it's in the top 10% of energy producers in America. I want to repeat that. Top 10% of energy producers in the entire country. This microgrid represents a revolution, a transition, a step. No less than the projects that I've defined in the past is the significance of this event. Because when you can generate from renewable energy, capture, store, and deploy, that model can be replicated everywhere. This is not only an important job creation event for this local region, this is a model for our entire nation. And with the leadership that you see on this stage, I see actually the leadership in West Virginia thoughtfully creating and chartering that future. I've been in electric vehicle and battery development 32 years, and I can say I've never been more proud of my leaders in this country than I am now. Because in those 32 years, we never actually had clear ideas. We had a lot of, I would say, independent efforts, but we have now a collective, a sustained, a durable effort to create a transition to an energy future that is being birthed right here in West Virginia. I'm very excited about that. I want to bring one name forward today, the mayor of Ravenswood, Josh Miller. As I, as I was learning and thinking about our role as we're bringing this battery technology into a grid storage technology that we just announced last week. And I was learning about the business that we could create here together with West Virginia. I found a documentary 10 years ago called Made in America. That's an important idea. If we're going to have an industrial revolution, we need to get back to the basics of making things in America. That's an important idea. And in his documentary, he said, I'm not celebrating for Democrats or Republicans. I'm advocating for the people in Ravenswood that lost their jobs because of the closure of a plant. And I want to emphasize the importance of Made in America. I think that's so important. That's so inspiring. <laughs> Josh Miller's documentary was an intention. When someone puts an intention forward, they lay a seed, and then as other people see that, they start to do something with that seed, and they nourish it. We're here now 10 years later, and I'm proud and excited to announce that not only will Our Next Energy provide this battery technology for this site that will help deploy the energy that's generated with Berkshire Hathaway Renewables installation, for the production of these parts. Not only will we provide that battery technology, we decided to build a factory for our grid storage business right here. <laughs> We're announcing today 
105 new jobs that will be paired with the effort with Berkshire Hathaway Energy Renewables in this site. We couldn't be more delighted to partner with our dear friends here on stage. Alicia, you've been an enormous inspiration to our company and the partnership with your company and our ability to develop this site as a model for how the country can think about energy is truly exciting. It's inspiring to me to work with leaders that can think about that transition that are going to set the stage, just like that railroad bridge across the Mississippi River, for others to follow as we start to think about the United States in this new industrial revolution that we're part of. With that, I want to turn the stage back over to a good friend of mine now, Secretary Carmichael. And I want to say one word about Secretary Carmichael before you come back. When I watched that speech that the team was preparing, and he referenced his father with conviction and passion and love, it also meant a lot to me to see the heart of the people that are planning this transition and this revolution. We really appreciate that. We want to be in business here because we see the heart and soul of this country coming to serve this next generation of energy storage and technology. And we couldn't be more thrilled and proud to be working with you, your team, and all of you on stage. Thank you very much. Well, what a great additional announcement today. Another 105 jobs in a new industry for Jackson County. What inspiring. None of this would be possible without the collaboration of everyone on this stage and many others in this room. Everyone has paid a, played a, a great, important role in this. Among the leaders in this uh, effort to revitalize this uh, uh, incredible economic development opportunity that we have in our state is our good friend, Senator Joe Manchin, the senior senator from West Virginia who has been He's ready to come to the stage. I can see him getting up ready to get up. But he's been such an incredible advocate for our community, for our state, for the nation, and for uh, all that he's brought forth to make this uh, opportunity a reality. I can tell you behind the scenes, he's done a lot of work uh, to make this possible. Senator Manchin, let's give him a great big jack. First of all, let me just say that I'm so impressed with Ajit knowing so much about the history of West Virginia and being able to articulate that for us. Uh, to Mayor Miller, to Mayor Rader, to all the uh, public officials here today, to my colleagues, Senator Capito, Congresswoman uh, Miller, uh, it's a wonderful team that we all work together because the bottom line is all about West Virginia. And I think we know that. To Mitch Carmichael, I knew his father Bill. I served with his father Bill. His father, Bill, taught me how to play poker in the back of the uh, House of Delegates. And he was very quiet, unassuming, so thoughtful and deliberate. And he was so uh, extremely kind. But So Mitch gets uh, that gene from his father. Now, the outgoing gene, his father being so quiet and, un, you know, just, uh, just, just a beautiful person. The other gene, I'm not sure where it comes from. It must be your mom. It must be your mom. But anyway, uh, I, I think about those days. I know your father Bill's got to be looking down. It truly is blessed. Uh, to Alicia, thank you. Steve, Steve didn't tell you he's a West Virginian. Yes. Huh? He forgot to tell you about that. So to Alicia and Majid, both of they're now all three West Virginians. <laughs> Once you get here, you stay. Uh, you know, when you think about how we got to where we've gotten to today, and where we've come from the state. I was talking to one of our reporters, and uh, I see her sitting there, and we were talking, she said, what do you think about today? And I said, why do you think they're here? And I said, first of all, look what you have. The industrial base you've had here. We helped build America. Think of the products that were built here. Think of the goods that were basically generated right here, produced and sent around the country to build the great country that we have. So the mindset here is basically we welcome manufacturing. We welcome the heavy lifting that all of our founding fathers and mothers had done before us. So what we're saying is a natural place to come. When you have a community that embraces you and says, we want what you're doing, 
We embrace what you're doing. We'll work with you. It's awful to go into an area where you're forcing yourself into an area that maybe that's not what we've always done, so we're not sure if this is where we're going to go. And they make decisions based on that. I know Alicia and Steve and Majid were thinking about that, but being so welcoming and can't wait to basically embrace this community and the community embrace them. Uh, I think of uh, also as we change, you know, we've been a heavy lifting state for a long time. I've always said the great state of West Virginia, uh, we mined the coal that made the steel, that built the ships and factories, that we did it all. We're part of America. We're the energy force of America. How do you continue that? You have to be open for change. You cannot close your mind and say, okay, we've done our job. Our job will never be done. This country is going to need what we do every day for many, many generations to come. And for us not to have an open mind about that is wrong. So the 117th Congress, the last two years, will go down as the most productive Congress in one of the, in the history, I think, of the United States of what we got accomplished. And we got accomplished that in a divided Congress. Democrats and Republicans have to make a decision. Do we work together? Or do we go separate ways and get nothing accomplished? Well, we work together. The bipartisan, uh, uh, the bipartisan infrastructure bill, that broke out of a bill that was introduced, which is called the BBB, which is way, way, way too far overreaching for our country. It was too big at the time for our country. But there were some parts of that that we thought would work. So we got a group together, Shelley, and uh, we had about five Democrats, five Republicans working very closely for quite a bit of time. And we broke the bill apart. They never thought that we would have a bill that we could all agree on and come out with, but we did. Because we had the commitment that once we got the bill, we got a bill, he had to give us a vote on the floor. He gave us a vote on the floor. We passed it in the Senate. Then went to the House, they held us hostage for a while, thinking they were going to get something else, and they didn't. We finally got that through. So it came through a tumultuous movement, if you will. And then moved on to the Inflation Reduction Act. The Inflation Reduction Act was done strictly for energy security. The uh, administration, this administration, has sold that as a, uh, as a uh, climate bill. It has an awful lot of good things about the climate. But it's about security of the nation. You cannot remain the superpower of the world if you're not energy independent. You can't be secure if you're not energy independent. And the bottom line is we were not. And we had the ability to do that. We have the resources, we have the flow of energy under our feet right here, all through West Virginia. We still have plenty of coal that's demanded around the world, even though the reduction of it being used in America is not what it was. I think there's another whole life for our coal markets. I really do. And some of the advanced technology and products will come from them, carbon, all of that. But with the gas that we have, and now with hydrogen coming on top of that. So what we did is we looked at a piece of legislation. We worked in with Democrats and Republicans for the last five years talking about we had to be more diverse. OK, how do you do it? For the last 10 or 12 years, I'm chairman of, of Energy and, uh, and Natural Resource Committee. Shelley is the ranking member. And uh, depending on how things change, she'd be chairman, but she's the ranking member of the environmental uh, EPW, they call Environmental Public Works two extremely important committees for our state and for us both to be setting on uh, appropriations and both of us chairing major committees it's worked well for us we, we're, we're punching way above our weight let's put it that way but this piece of legislation came about came about because of this how long have you been hearing about cap and trade carbon pricing on and on and on all the things we should be doing if you want to control the environment and i've always said this you cannot eliminate your way to a cleaner environment. You can basically innovate your way to a cleaner environment. So we never did go down the path of putting a price on carbon, changing the pricing structure of everything you buy. We basically said, let's incentivize it. And that's exactly what we did. So if you want to know how the bill's working and what's happening with right here, would these investments have happened? No, they wouldn't. Because what we did is we said, we're your partner. We're going to take some of that risk away. We're going to work with you. We want you to survive. And by doing that, we're getting people from all over the world right now, not just in America. Manufacturing's coming back. The car industry wants to go to the EVs. I always would say, how in the world are we going to go to the EVs, electric vehicles, when we don't produce any of the batteries? Very little of the sources that were coming from there. 80% is China. 
We were totally committed to the China market. I said, first time in the history of the United States of America that we'll ever have a transportation mode that we can't control. I said, you, gotta, you're, you guys have lost your mind. <laughs> so we said, fine. If we're going to do a bill and we're going to basically say they want $7,500 credit to put more electric vehicles in the marketplace, then let's get something for it. Let's make sure that the critical minerals are sourced from North America or free trade agreement countries that we can depend on a reliable source. Not China, not Russia, not Iran, not North Korea, who have very little, if any, values that we have. So we went down that path there. The other $3,750 credit from that, the other $3,750 comes from, basically, as a manufacturer in North America. We're bringing factories back and people are coming. This is all, all hands on deck. Not one source or one group or one political party or one uh, direction could ever do it by themselves. With a governor's team, with Mitch leading it, and basically you don't have a, not only a cheerleader, but a doer. He'll get, he'll get down, he'll call you, he'll stay on top of it. And working with, with uh, Craig Blair and, and with Roger Henshaw has been magnificent. I see Ben sitting here and all our different friends. We see Secretary of State here back and, and all the people. That, everybody that's working together, it has to. Brian, what you do with Nettle and all that, I just see so many people working together. Let me just say one thing. Welcome. Welcome to West Virginia. I can tell you, the partnerships work this way. To have a good partnership, we've got to work as hard to make them as successful as they can to give us the opportunities. It's a two-way street. And we're going to make that happen in West Virginia. I can tell you. Ravenswood, the whole area up here, the commercial area, people up here accepting everybody, the workforce you have is going to make the difference. That's what brings them here. We can only basically give them an opportunity. You are what keeps them here too. So Josh and, and, and Karen, all of you, thank you. Thank you for what you do. All of you all work so hard every day for West Virginia. I thank you all too. God bless the great state of West Virginia. May God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you, Senator. He's such a great advocate for West Virginia. You know, there's no state, and we, we continue to talk about this with Berkshire Hathaway and Time Ed and uh, One Energy, that you can gather the leaders of the entire state in a room in a, on short notice. I mean, you can get our two U.S. Senators, our incredible Congresswoman, uh, our governor and our leaders of our legislative branches all in a room in a quick, short order. And it makes a difference. And as you know, probably the best friend Jackson County has ever had uh, is the uh, family uh, and her individually, Senator Kathy. She has been just an incredible advocate for West Virginia. She's always at every one of our events. She uh, continues to be uh, our stalwart in terms of uh, advocacy for our, uh, for our state and our communities. And let's just, we can't thank her enough. Let's give her a big Jackson County clap. Thank you, everybody. It is so wonderful to be here. And I'm never getting sick of the picture that keeps flashing that shows the beautiful bend in the river uh, where this great announcement and where this great development is going to occur. So thank you, Mitch, for everything you've done with your team. Uh, it's been uh, really a whirlwind when you think about it uh, in terms of timing, and it's such a wonderful day. So I've heard a lot of really cool things here, but I, I think back to two dates in my mind, uh, and Mitch talked about one of them, and I think Governor Manchin was in this meeting. Came here over to Century Aluminum, very angry meeting here with Century Aluminum, uh, probably in the years between some late after 2005. And it was kind of obvious what was going to happen here. And uh, it was a sad day for all of us. And a sad day for the community and a real, a real uh, blow, a real blow. And then, uh, the fight for health care benefits, remember that, for the folks that had retired and or had been left behind by Century Union, that went on for several years. So a lot of angst and pain really felt uh, from this particular site. So then, the next day to think about was, I get summoned to Morgantown, to WVU. 
because this senator, Glenn Jeffries, had written a letter and uh, to Berkshire Hathaway and, and Warren Buffett, I believe. Uh, you can tell the story, but anyway. And guess what? Berkshire Hathaway Renewables wants to come to West Virginia to talk. And they want to get as many people at the table uh, as, as possible as an introduction. So I, of course, right there, Senator Manchin was there, Glenn was there, Mitch, I believe you were there, Sarah Miller was there. Um, we had a lot of people around the table. Um, Dr. Gee at WVU hosted us. And we put on the best PR campaign we possibly could. <laughs> And we told Bill, was with you, uh, we told Bill and Alicia how, what doing business in West Virginia was going to be like, how we all are rowing in the same boat with the same oar, both from the federal, the state, the local, the development folks, the research folks. Whatever we could and would do and should do, we will do. We will do. And I'm not sure that, the, that uh, that that was the, the, the stake that laid the, I think it was the stake that laid the groundwork in that meeting. But lo and behold, here we are, almost 15, 16 months later, announcing this wonderful, um, or doing the groundbreaking, the announcement's been made, doing the groundbreaking, additional jobs. Jeep is here now with another 105 jobs for battery storage. Uh, something that he said really stuck in my mind. No other such facility in the world. How much do we love hearing that here in West Virginia? We love hearing that. And so I think back to those dates, and, uh, and so I am extremely grateful. Another thing happened today. Uh, I said to Alicia when I saw her, we've seen each other several times over the last several months, year. I said, we're just so, so grateful and thankful and happy and our, our mayors, our communities, Jackson County, the surrounding areas, we just, you know, what else can we do? And, and, and how has it moved so fast? And she said, she said, it's moved so fast uh, because everybody just, I've never had so many people say, how can I help? What can we do to help? So we gotta keep that up. We've got, uh, we've got now the commitment, we've got the groundbreaking, our helping and our commitments to help continue, we'll continue every single day, because that's who we are, really. As West Virginians, that's who we are. And Steve, I was up in New Cumberland at the New Health Center. Steve's from New Cumberland. It's almost all the way up to the top. And, and we're really pleased about the investment that you're going to have here. We know you'll take good care of us as a WVU grad yourself. So uh, uh, he'll be cheering on the Mountaineers with the rest of us. And so I'm really excited. Uh, Joe pretty much covered what we've been doing in Washington. The IIJA, which is the big infrastructure package, which I did have a major, major role in is a source of great pride for me. Uh, the dirt's flying on our, our bridges, the dirt's flying on our roads. Uh, we're now seeing investments in our um, uh, in, in renewable energies, in our airports, in our rail, everything. It's, it's everything. I mean, America is about infrastructure, and America has to modernize, and we realized it at the time, and we were able to get it together, and we're seeing the, uh, and I'm so glad that this is one of those many things that happen across the country, but across the state that's a result of that great effort. Um, so I pledge my undying support. Uh, our, our office has always been here, uh, willing and, and ready to, to dig in. But another thing I wanna say too about uh, Berkshire that I think is exceedingly important is the commitment that they made right away to the community. They came in uh, with a commitment to the nonprofits here in Jackson County to help improve the quality of life, to realize that some people need more help than others in other phases. Children need to have the inspiration to get into STEM careers that's gonna to lead to jobs that are here, all of these kinds of things. So this is not just an, an, an economic investment. This is an investment from their heart into our hearts. And so for that, I'm deeply appreciated. I'm very proud to be your United States Senator, and thank you for having me back here in Great Jackson County. And one other plus I've noticed from this, and I'm sure Senator Manchin will agree with me here, and I want to thank the governor. I, I think he's here because I see some of his folks hanging around here. So, um, so congratulations to the governor, and I certainly will wish that on him. But we've had a bit of a blessing today because uh, Senator Manchin mentioned about the genetic makeup of Mitch Carmichael. Well, God smiled on us today and toned his voice down about 20 degrees. So, so we, we will all retain our hearing as we end the meeting. Thank you all very much.
to get my voice back. <laughs> so, um, that doesn't just make you feel good when you see our congressional delegation and our uh, representatives. It just absolutely it makes you feel sorry for the other states that have to compete against us. But uh, one of our great advocates, she's uh, became such a leader in the Congress, and uh, she's, I had the privilege of serving with her in the House of Delegates. She's going to be terrific for Jackson County and our entire region, is uh, uh, the first lady of our congressional delegation uh, in terms of Congress, not the Senate. But <laughs> uh, please welcome to the stage, uh, Carol Miller. Thank you. everybody's names, but all of you know that I love you and that I have just been so honored to serve in the State House for 12 years and then go to the Big House, and I'm starting my fifth year there. Um, everything, it, we all complement each other with the committees that Joe and Shelley are on, and I'm on Ways and Means over in the, the Big House. <laughs> but thank you all for being here today and for being such an important part, all of you such an important part. You know, West Virginia has always been known as an energy state. And here we're going into the next generation and how we can combine all of these wonderful natural resources we have, the smarts we've got, the land, and I will say one of the favorite words in West Virginia is factory. So that, that's a very good thing. Um, you know, over 100 years we have provided energy. One of the first things I did when I went to Congress is I founded the Energy Export Caucus. Tried to make it bipartisan, did a good job. I have people from California and Texas, so we, we kind of cover everything that's going on, and it's a wonderful time to move that forward with all this brand new tech, technology we have and, and the aerospace that we're working on in West Virginia. This all just fits together. You know, we've all suffered heartache in West Virginia through the years. I went in in 2007 and I experienced what was going on here and the heartache because West Virginians want to work. And we hated that our best exports then became our children that were educated and the people that want to work. And now we have the opportunity, thank you, thank you, thank you, for what is going to be ahead. And so we've got over 300 new jobs here, another 100 jobs there, and we're working into renewable energy. And you're going to remember me because I was short and sweet. God bless you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you, Carol. She's a, uh, really, I've worked with her in the uh, House of Delegates. She's just a great, great advocate for us. We are here today, really, because Glenn Jeffries wrote a letter. And uh, we need to uh, appreciate, you've all heard the story. Uh, Glenn writes the letter. In fact, he sends me a copy of it, calls me the day uh, that he does it. Say, hey, you, you know, I didn't check with you on this, but I went ahead and sent this letter. And I was like, you don't have to check with me, man. It's, uh, that, that works great. But, you know, you don't think about it. Warren Buffett opens this letter, reads it, and sends it to Bill Furman. And Bill says, uh, or Warren Buffett tells him, hey, get on a plane, go see what's going on in West Virginia. <laughs> and so uh, because Glenn took the initiative and has continued to work on this project and others for economic development, we are here today. And we owe him a great uh, Jackson County welcome for that incredible effort. And let's hear from Glenn Jeff. Stacks and the smoke coming out of Century Aluminum. 
brought back a lot of memories. And I know it's brought back, a, it, if you stop to think about it, so there's a lot of memories with each one of you in here. The people that have worked there, I, I've had relatives that work at that plant. And I can remember when the plant was going to be shut down. Um, there was a, a lot of people that were hurt. Um, things changed. Our world changed, our economy changes. Uh, just as it changes here in West Virginia, there's, when there's an end, there is, as Secretary Carmichael said, a new beginning. And that new beginning is today. Uh, it was a long journey, Alicia. Uh, it started with uh, Bill and Alicia, uh, meeting with them, lots of meetings. And uh, I can never be thankful enough for them believing in West Virginia. Uh, we've done a lot of traveling in the state. Um, I even think that probably my, me taking them around probably scared them a few times that um, the next thing I know, the next time we have a meeting, we're going somewhere, there's a helicopter there to take us. So, um, but I, I can't thank everyone that has been involved with bringing Berkshire Hathaway here. Uh, and Mr. Buffett, thank you very much for reading that letter. Um, and Bill and Alicia and Steve, um, Secretary Carmichael, um, I, I just, everything's really been said, but I just can't thank them enough. This is a memory in my life that I'll never ever forget. And um, so it's a new beginning here in Ravenswood. It's a new beginning here in Jackson County. And I really do see that this area exploding again to the, to the way it was uh, back 20, 30 years ago. So thank you very much. to create the opportunity that we have before us today. He's been an incredible advocate for our state, for our jobs, and the economic resurgence that's occurring in our state. We, uh, uh, he's frequently on the road doing announcements for economic development projects, and uh, that's a good thing, right? That's the kind of thing that we want to see happen in West Virginia. The 36th governor of our great state, the Honorable Jim Justice. Let's welcome him. Come on here. 
you got an air lift. <laughs> Now, okay. Now you've got my undivided attention. Let me just tell you this. You've already heard this a bunch and everything. But for me, you know, a little guy at one time that every single time I ever visited my grandparents, they didn't have indoor plumbing. And my dad, on my dad's side, was an only child, lived in a little coal camp house, one bedroom, one bathroom, whole life, you know. For me to be sitting here and know that Berkshire Hathaway is coming, you know, Precision cast parts, time at, absolutely. And now we have a brand new company before we even get started that has agreed to come. 20, I mean, 20, probably 200 acres plus, you know, that's going to be developed here with a really unique approach, the, you know, their own power grid. It is unbelievable what is fixing to happen right now. There have been so many people, our senators, our congresswomen, you know, whether it be our economic development people, Senator uh, Jeffries, all these great folks here from these incredible companies, and they deserve so much credit. It's unbelievable. Now, from my standpoint, what are you doing? <laughs> from my standpoint, nobody wants wet goodness and growth and economic development in this state more than I do. Are we break dancing? <laughs> but with all that being said, first and foremost, I thank everybody. I thank all of y'all in every single way. And really and truly, what is awakening and happening in this great state right now is the world is awakening to a different West Virginia. They really are. You know, Baby Dog is kind of like me. She can't scratch her back. <laughs> but with all that being said, if you just step back, Okay, but in this, in this incredible world today that is awakening to West Virginia, <laughs> you are so good normally, what? She got a bath yesterday, and that's probably driving her crazy. Nevertheless, I can't thank you enough. I know how great this is going to be. We have all worked really, really hard. We all pulled the rope together, and it became a reality, and it became a re reality for this incredible state. So God bless each and every one of you, and thank you for being here. Now, I better tend to baby. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Governor. Thank you, baby dog. <laughs> and it, thank you for all the work that you've done to make this happen. I can remember those meetings when you were saying, yes, do it. Get it done. And uh, he doesn't have a lot of patience. Uh, and so we got it done, and we're here today in short order. It, is, it has been a long journey, but it was a quick journey. And uh, we moved quickly. And I, I would just, uh, I think we uh, have some time set aside to open it up for questions. If there are uh, questions, and uh, there are so many great people in this audience I see that uh, are uh, so instrumental in helping this uh, project. But are there Questions that there's some mics around the room and so forth that we can uh, field some questions. If not, <clears throat> we'll get ready to go to the new round. Y'all gotta ask something. <laughs> What's the timeline? 
So uh, the question for those who couldn't hear is uh, the time frames on uh, when the solar panels will be erected and the beginning of the construction project and so forth. Uh, can one of you all handle that? <laughs> Can you hear me? There we go. So on um, the, the timeline for the, the solar farm, the importance of starting right now with the groundbreaking is so we can start some pre-construction activities with some clearing and things like that. So you'll see that activity starting really quickly here and continuing this year. Next year we'll get solar panels in and we're going to drive straight to Steve's date when, when they're going to bring their facility online and the the end of the third quarter next year uh, is when we'll start solar, the solar project gets turned over in, in blocks or commissioned in blocks so it'll come up over time uh, to match the load of the factory. So I'll let Steve tell you about that. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you Alicia. Um, you know, after the governor's uh, state of state address, uh, we were back at his quarters and, and he made a statement, he said, tag, you're in. So, you remember that, governor? <clears throat> so, uh, I guess I'm it. We're here today, we're gonna start the groundbreaking ceremony today, but we will be moving, moving earth and starting the uh, underground infrastructure very quickly. Um, we need to be melting in this facility in the third quarter of 2024 with uh, full qualification as we roll into 2025. Um, we've got about uh, $80 million of equipment on order thus far. Uh, that's just the start. Uh, just this week we um, let our contract for our, our uh, EPCM contract, which is about another 30 some million dollars. Our engineering leader's back there in the back with my wife. <laughs> So, uh, Chris, will, Chris will certainly uh, help with all those details later. But very exciting. Um, so, Doug Westfall, to answer your question, uh, we'll be moving dirt here pretty quick. Uh, the state's been fantastic with helping us with permitting processes, making sure we can meet our aggressive timeline. Uh, while I was speaking, I, I talked a little bit about the demand for the titanium, and now it's a bit exacerbated with the war in Ukraine. A lot of global titanium production was over in Russia. So, uh, our customers are depending upon this facility, depending upon this uh, community and the workers to get this up and running quickly. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for that question. It's important to realize also that. Um, yo, yes. G? Yeah, I can, yeah. Uh, I can talk a little bit about the, the battery part of it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we will be moving forward with an existing 40,000 square foot building so that helps us accelerate the installation of this grid factory, the battery factory. Uh, the first employees will be hired uh, beginning of next year, first quarter. We'll be moving the, the, the factory equipment in in the second quarter and qualifying that equipment. We'll be producing production Aries grid batteries for the site at Ravenswood in the beginning of 2025. That's fast. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes, Don. Yeah. Uh, Don Smith, West Virginia Press. This, before we've even broken ground on the first development, we announced a second development. Can, can you talk about how that's building on itself and what we can see, what you think we can see in the future and what enticed your companies to say, okay, great, we're going to do this and then you to follow? Yeah. I think it's a very interesting point about the ecosystem of suppliers. As uh, Berkshire Hathaway Energy Renewables and Precision Cast Parts built an idea to make a product out of renewable energy, they needed a battery. As we decided to be a supplier, we decided that it would be better to make that battery and that factory right here locally. And then that will give birth, I hope, to other suppliers that need to serve our parts to also create jobs locally. The ecosystem of suppliers, much like in any industry, think about the auto industry as an example because I'm from that industry and I know that maybe a little better than others. Detroit, as the auto industry centered itself, created an entire ecosystem of suppliers. And I think the same thing can happen with renewable energy grids and the ability to bring all of these companies together. So I think this is just the beginning. I think we'll be seeing more announcements like this as we expand this and then grow it beyond this site and other sites will need those same suppliers to work to produce for the other parts of the country. That's right, Mitch. And um, Mitch is probably the best business partner I've ever had. 
uh, and we're working together. So it, it starts with precision cast parts and bringing that um, state-of-the-art titanium melt facility that is uh, part of the aerospace industry to that site. Um, and then with our renewable energy piece, as Mujib said, we bring in battery pr production and uh, Mitch and I are going to continue to work together to build out that whole site. So uh, just for a point of reference, we haven't even started touching the actual footprint of the Century Aluminum plant but for the 40,000 square foot building. And so all of that space that was formerly Century Aluminum is yet to be filled in with additional exciting announcements like this about additional manufacturing that'll be complementary to our, our clean energy, our aerospace manufacturing, and Steve may be able to add, add some on the aerospace side. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, precision cast parts, Corp. Uh, we have 23,000 employees globally. We're in 13 different countries. Um, when I talk about aerospace, just to bring that to some, some reality, we've probably all flown somewhere in the last uh, X number of months. If it's a rotating component in the front of a jet aircraft engine, uh, odds are 7 out of 10 that it's Titan titanium. Um, so we're pretty proud of that fact. And then when we get into the aerostructure side for our two large uh, commercial aerospace manufacturers in the world, Boeing here in the United States and Airbus, um, the, those, those drive a lot of businesses in the aerospace world to sort of co-locate. So I think there's lots of opportunity to look up and down the value stream. Uh, this is on the materials side. Materials are sort of the beginning of the process, if you will. It actually starts with a with a mining operation and then moves through, uh, from mining of routine ore, moves through titanium sponge, and the sponge will be brought in here to this facility and we'll be using that to make uh, make our titanium uh, ingots. And then it moves down to the, through the value stream. Uh, what I see typically around the world is, um, as I said, a number of those different companies will co-locate closely. So it's been talked about as an aerospace hub or the beginning of, and I truly do believe that. Let me just say that the, the, the time frame that things are so condensed, the bills that we pass are 10 year cycles. So your 2032 is your cycle basically for your investment tax credit, uh, your production tax credits, uh, the uh, coal fields and tax incentives that we have that really go with all of this that they're talking about here and the reasons for coming to West Virginia and energy states. <clears throat> if they don't mature that and they're not profitable, that's why they're working in such a tight frame to get their production up, to get basically in the mainstream so they can compete anywhere in the world. We're just basically their partners as we get them to that maturity. So that's why it's going to be very steep. It'll be very quick. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I really truly don't have anything to add other than just this. And the center is exactly right on money. There's a window here, a window here that drives, you know, there's a fellow a long time ago that told me just this. He said he was he was he was told to write a job description. He was the CEO of a company that had been bought out. You know, but he was going to go work for the other company. And he said, write a job description. You know, they told him to write a job description of what he did every day. And he wrote 13 pages. And then he said, he laid his pen down and then he said one word. He said, or, or one sentence, he said, see the right person in the right job in the moment. And that's all he wrote. Really and truly, in this situation right here, with the window that they had, the right person in the right job in the moment. And that's why this will move. And the satellites all coming around it, we all know, and we're all so excited about that, it's off the chart. We had to move. We had to move from our senators, our congresswomen. We had to move and say, do it. And that's what we did. We absolutely, and, and, and Mitchell know, you know from, my, from my standpoint, here's exactly what I think and where I stand. And it's just as simple. Is, you know, I want to be Jim, or I want to be Jimmy. You don't want to see James, but if you see James, I'll sit on your ass, and that's all it's doing. <laughs> Now, and so at the end of the day, you know, when it came time to make a decision, we moved. And that's really and truly what all of us have done. Everybody here has done just that. We have 
real life industry that is absolutely motivated by our government and they're motivated to move because of the window. Good stuff's happening. I mean, this is what happened right now. Too. Yeah, well said. Sarah, did you have? I do, thank you. I just, on behalf of the younger generation of West Virginia, I want to express my sincere appreciation. I think everyone here has said it well. But I recognize, too, the importance of our government working at the speed and urgency of business. And to the senators, thank you for creating this urgency. I want to um, underscore what Senator Capito mentioned, though, in your commitment to the education of future generations in West Virginia and the talent that you will hire. I wonder if you might talk to us a little bit about where you're heading and where your mind is, um, because this is not just for today, it's for our tomorrow. So thank you. Uh, I, okay, I can start. Um, well, one thing that we think is very important is uh, developing uh, K through 12 initiatives that develop the curriculum and the opportunities on vocational training where the future jobs that we're creating are introduced as subjects in K through 12. And in my specific case, as I've gone through my education system, uh, it was General Motors that came to universities across the United States that created a solar car race competition that got the workforce development initiative started around electric vehicle back in the 90s. And I think we need to do a lot more of that. So one thing that our company is committed to is that 20% of our entire workforce will always be interns. As we grow, that internship creates one-on-one -on -one partnership. It benefits the employees because they get to mentor and lead. It builds that relationship, but it also benefits from the younger generation, whether it's even a high school or college internship. We'll carry that forward here in West Virginia as well, because we think that the bond and bringing the workforce development and the talent up starts with that one-on-one -on -one relationship. And so we're gonna work with our academic institutions work to make sure that the internship opportunities are there and then develop that workforce training. And if we can kind of populate that idea across a lot of other industries and maybe some of the other business leaders here can talk about their ideas around that, that's the best engagement we can ever do is that you create mentorship. So that's what we would do. At the risk of uh, sounding like you even I rehearse this, um, <laughs> That is exactly the model that Precision Cast Parts runs. Uh, we typically like to be out in the, in the fields in the vocational institutions as well as in the, the universities and colleges. We'll do a number of things with internships, co-ops. Um, I mentioned earlier that we have a facility up about two hours north of here. Any given time, I've got five or ten co-ops there. Uh, a number of those uh, are also positions with the uh, <coughs> university, by example. It's funny how that connection got. Um, so, so I, one thing that is exciting about this factory, we an industry 4.0 factory that we're building, which will bring about the need for a little more technical um, skill sets, if you will. Uh, running some of the machines in this factory, some of the milk furnaces we've, uh, we've purchased, is going to be a little different than uh, you know, some of the machines that my father worked for 43 years in the steel industry up north. Um, they were a little different back then. So these are going to require, these machines, the technology is going to require different skill sets, and I agree. That begins back into the K through 12 um, part of a, a child's life. And it has to be developed and fostered all the way through so that the interest is there as they decide to make their decision coming out of high school. Yeah. And on that, I think Mitch, you probably have some specific things around education that you are welcome to add as well. but. Um, the great thing about energy is, um, as Eugene mentioned, this is an energy state, and so we have the opportunity to really retrain um, folks in the energy industry to, um, with the new advanced batteries with solar, but using the same skills that are so abundant in this state. So um, that's the great thing about the energy piece. But Mitch, I know you have some fantastic education programs here in the state that I want you to brag about. Well, I will take a moment to brag about a, a piece of legislation that the governor signed 
and uh, shepherded through the legislature is West Virginia. We, take, we should take great pride in this. West Virginia is one of the very few states in America that provides no cost community and technical college education for any West Virginia. That's not someone who's just graduated high school. That's someone who wants a new skill set, a marketable skill that they can take to the market. Uh, that's a great uh, advantage for West Virginia, and it helps attract businesses. And, and Alicia was very excited about that when she learned about it. And uh, so, Governor, I'd like to call you for uh, some additional comments. Well, let me, I guess, let me kind of wrap up and just say, just say this, this, and that is, uh, you know, first of all, we thank these incredible people, this incredible opportunity that's coming to our state. We don't want to ever forget our coal miners and our gas workers and all the people that have worked for decades and decades and decades. Right now, I mean, right this moment, you know, there's people that are 7,000 plus feet underground and they're in, in a coal mine that the coal height that needs taller than this and they can't even sit up or stand up all day. You know, we don't want to forget their contribution to what they do for this state all the time. But we want to be a state that embraces the alternatives and embraces the opportunities for our future in so many different ways. Now, with that, I want to just end by just saying just this. Our legislature, whether it be our House or our Senate, they have been real contributors. The reason that I'm just getting here is there's so much going on in Charleston that right now and so many moving parts, it's unflat believable. They deserve a lot of credit as well. Honestly, we could not be here today without everybody pulling the rope. Like I said, it is an amazing day for a guy it was a little kid that absolutely, when he visited his grandparents, they didn't have indoor plumbing. And for me to be here in this position with you today and see all the accomplishments of all these great people, I'm really, really proud. So let's not forget a lot of people that brought us to the dance and let's embrace our future and lots of different alternative targets that we have going forward, but we're not going to forget either. God bless each and every one of us. One more question, and then uh, we'll get ready to go to the grill. Okay, well, luckily I don't have a question, but as a community and technical college president who's in the room, I just wanted to send that reminder. I'm Tori Jackson with WBUP, and also I wanted to note Ben Cummings is here from the Rowan Jackson Technical Center. It's important that we partner with K-12, as you mentioned, and that's what we do in West Virginia, and our community and technical college system is very interested in industry-informed curriculum, so always know whatever you need, make sure you reach out to us, and we're happy to help. That sounds like an advertisement. Yes, yeah. yeah. One more question. One more. Josh Miller. Not a question. I wanted to say thank you. I always went by the quote, the lead dog has no trail, they blaze their own. And I appreciate all you're doing to make this happen for Ravenswood, Ripley, Jackson County, and the Mid-Ohio Valley Regional Council. We're, we're, we're region, region, I'm sorry. We're very much appreciative. And uh, this is exciting times, so I, I'm happy just to be a part of it. Well, you've been great. And I'd appreciate a five-star review on that documentary. <laughs> <laughs> well, that concludes this morning. And as we get ready to leave, to go, ready to go to work, I do have one more problem. This is my father's uh, lunch bucket that he carried to work every day at the Kaiser Aluminum Society. Made, made a little bit. And uh, so we began the, the day uh, with a, a bag. The uh, father would have worked every day. And now he would say, It's time to get to work. Get your life practice. Let's get to work, Steve, Alicia, the Jeep, and get this plant built and these people work. Thank you, guys.